right, so when you're drawing rocks, step number one you're drawing the rocks is to have like a good outline. So by good outline, what I mean is you don't want like um, round rocks, unless it's by the ocean, they can be a little more rounded. But in general though, if you look at these angles, they're like kind of sharp, bing, 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 all the way over, and they look pretty solid. Over here in the bottom section, same thing. The further down the rock is, the more curved this is gonna be. So this is kind of curved on the bottom to show that it's three dimensional. If it was flat, it wouldn't look real unless it's further away. Okay, now for the brushes. When you're doing the uh, rocks, the brushes you want are all gonna be bright brushes. That's these guys right here. Paint-wise, we'll come down here. We'll also need a toothbrush eventually. <clears throat> focus, focus. Almost focused. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. And once again, um, adding rocks to landscapes, fields, next to a road, you can almost put rocks anywhere. So this is a basic gray value. Now we'll come in here with a little bit of blue. So it's not just gray, because that'd be kind of boring. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here, I'll show you the brush strokes. Brush strokes, you wanna do a clean edge when you're going around the perimeter of the rock. So like clean edge, add extra little jaggedy marks to it. This is a little bit dark. Brush strokes, I'm gonna get rid of. So when you're painting rocks, you don't want brush strokes like from a brush. What the heck are you talking about, Mr. Stevens? Good question. What I mean is you can get rid of the brush strokes by using a sponge or a towel. Paper towel is kind of nice. And uh, what that does, breaks it up, makes it look more organic, more heavy. So it's not too smooth, not too brushy. I currently just have, oh, oh, I got toilet paper. That was good. Okay, and you gotta figure out where your light source is, which is coming over here to the right, so this is gonna be darker on this side. Now we'll start breaking this out. So this is layer one, this is the base coat. I'm worried about basic uh, brush strokes, like uh, shapes of them, what have you. Hold on, focus. So it's a little more jaggedy. This is being recorded, so I'll be able to uh, post this later. All right. So that's kind of like a basic shape right there. I don't know why it's blurry. I'm going to take the toilet paper now. A lot of now, so I'm getting rid of the brush strokes. That's the only purpose of this. And automatically, the toilet paper, dry toilet paper anyways, will give you like a nice rocky kind of texture. Okay, then I'll start blocking out where the highlights are going to go. I'll go, so this is like a tenth of the color. And I could use a smaller brush. And then the shapes, when you do the highlights, um, think of them like geometric shapes. So here, if I come out here, a light shape there, so like rectangular, I could do another sharp edge. So watch this one, here it goes. Down, angled, bam. So super simple, but even that one brush stroke, all of a sudden, you can kind of start to see the structure of it. Uh, what's happening, where the highlights are, where the deep shadows are. All right, now I'll add another highlight right here. So there's not too many, uh, not too many shapes, oddly enough, for rocks. Not too many brush strokes. Okay, I don't know why it keeps going blurry. Hold on one second. Okay, mechanical problems. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I have this. Now if I want to blend this part in with that, um, all I have to do is rinse off the brush a little bit. And then, uh, this is a clean brush now. And then uh, drag it across, so it kind of softens it a little bit. Still using the geometric brush stroke cell. So. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with some shadow areas. I'll do black, maybe a little bit of blue in there as well. And then, uh, so I'll start off dark here, and right over the highlight, I got another little dark value. Boom, boom, boom. And so it's not like a bunch of brush strokes. It's like very few brush strokes will make it look like a pretty awesome looking rock. Okay, now I'll do a little more shadow over here on this side. Some brush strokes. 
Mm. Overall, I'm starting to like the shape of it. And this is only a base, well, not really a base coat, it's like layer two. Now I'll get rid of the brush strokes, coming in here and tapping it. That softens it a little bit. Okay, so now the next step is to add some texture to it. By the way, the painting part of the uh, rock is done. <clears throat> I'll take some black, heavily pigmented color, <clears throat> dip it in the water, make it all nice and soupy, and splatter on there. And then when you splatter it on, the wetter the paint, the uh, bigger the dots. So if you want bigger dots for a close-up rock, <clears throat> put a lot more water in there. Okay, so now, once it gets focused again, uh, maybe I'll move it down here. Hold on one second. Maybe it'll like that better. There we go. Okay, so now that I have that part done, um, I'm going to take my hand and lightly kind of spank it a little bit. And what that does is it blurs it out so you can't really tell. It's like toothbrush splatter, so you don't want one technique necessarily. All right, so now I'm going to rinse out the toothbrush. I'll do the same thing with white. Come in here with a little bit of white action. Mop it out a little more water. And repeat that same process with white splatter. Now I got the white on there. <clears throat> Repeat a little uh, warm up the hand kind of thing. Tap it on there a little bit. Maybe twice. <clears throat> and that's good. All right, that part's done. Now I'm going to move on. Another part. Okay, so once you have the basics down there, so now I'm going to get a smaller brush. <clears throat> Could use a small bright brush. <clears throat> and you definitely want a small round brush as well <clears throat> for the detail. And, uh, today I'm rinsing out my brushes. It's official. My lord. They're so dirty. Okay, so we got my brushes down. And with this, except like a shadow color, I'll start to find it a little bit more. So here I'll come in here with a little bit more of a glaze, lighter values, thin paint, and not just black, but I got that little burnt sand in there or, uh, even blue. So I'm gonna come in here, darker glazes. All right, so now I'm gonna shift to even a smaller brush. I'm gonna use my round brush here. And this is to get the little crevices and stuff in there. So now I'm using black and brown. I'll define the cracks even more, or the little shading areas. And for a uh, good crack rock, um, you want to have it kind of following along the lines. So like right here, I'll do a crack rock. Any line, almost nothing. I'll go wider here. And the crack goes along the um, edge of the boulder or the rock. Okay, so now I have some crack. In addition to crack, uh -huh, you could also do some like white veins in the, in the rock. You've seen those. Here's how you do that. So with the, the veins, they don't follow the uh, cracks of the rock. So here, I'll come in here, light veins. These are like granite rocks. Wider, I'll get the brush super skinny. And wider again, skinnier. So these are like little veins running throughout the granite. <clears throat> the kind of a nice little added bonus. A little added touch, just to make it look happier. You know, more decorated. Rocks are into those kind of things. Like there's like rock competitions where one rock looks at another rock and he has more veins in it. And it's like, man, I wish I had those kind of veins. Here, I'm tapping it out again a little bit. You can see the veins though. Now, anywhere I have a crack, so all these cracks right here, further away from the light source, I'll come in here, a little bit of a highlight. Same thing on this side over here, far away from the light source. A uh, little crack on that. Okay, now that's, um, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. But that is a rock, my friends. Now I'm gonna show you how to do moss. So once you have your rock established, I use moss as an excuse to like hide the parts I don't like that much. Normally I don't use this permanent green color. 
right here. You know, you can barely see that. I'll zoom back a little bit more. All right, normally I don't use permanent green. It's kind of scary, but if you add a lot of black to it, it turns out okay. So I'm gonna dip it in black. Make sure on your notes for the, uh, the Rock Show, write down the date you watched it. And uh, so right here, black and green. So I'll start off kind of dark and wet paint. And as you get lighter, the paint's gonna get drier. So here, scumble, that's actually still <clears throat> too light. So I'm using the side of the brush, I'm not painting it like this, just rubbing it on the brush. And I'll even darken up a little more. So patches of dark green. And look for the patterns of it. You can do more or less. It depends how much you want. you want to hide on your rock. I'll have some going across the crack over here. Nice little patches. And you can put moss anywhere. Yeah, people, this is a moss show. Even if you're not doing on rocks, this is how you do moss on buildings or whatever else you want. On statues, buildings, or uh, boxes, ground, dirt. Okay. <clears throat> so you see the patches of the dark green. So that's the start of it. Now I have the patches of the dark green on the rocks. I'm lighting it up a little bit. A little more of the yellow and raw sienna. Yellow and raw sienna. So then I'll come in here with that. Now this is a drier paint. I'm going to use the side of the brush again and let it barely fall off. You can even use yellow ochre if you wanted. Yellow ochre is kind of a cool color. All right, so I'm going to like fan out, squish the brush a little bit like that. So it's like flat on one side. Don't use a flat side to let the paint fall off. And once again, this is just a dry brush technique. You should wait for your moss color underneath to dry first. But we didn't have to show must go on. Now I'll use some yellow, dip that in there, my dirty brush, and tap that in there, rub that. All right, so then add a little bit, it's got too light, darken it up again. And the, the key is when you're doing moss, you can also like blur up the brush strokes by tapping it, or you can use a uh, Kleenex. It'll also get like a nice little uh, mossy texture to it. And then use a little burnt sienna. That's my trick. Mm, burnt sienna moss is really nice. It makes it look kind of dead, but kind of cool. So kill parts of it. Don't have it all lushing green. Like at our pain, this moss is solid green, but not really believable. Unless you live in Oregon. California moss, we have, we have dead stuff. It's a little bit brown there. All right, so now I got cracks. I got the crack in there. Zoom in so you can see it better. And that's rock. Okay, geometric shapes, geometric brush strokes. That will look pretty good. That's the end of the rock show.